All right, it's so nice to see all of your beautiful faces today. I know that I'm seeing a couple new ones. If you are a new subscriber to the channel, welcome. Um, thanks for being a part of the family. And I know it's been a while since I've uploaded a video, but I thought that I would jump into a really interesting one today. For those guys who do not know who I am, my name is Saloni Verma. I am a biomedical engineer. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> I'm a biomedical engineer currently working in New York. Um, I make COVID testing kits. I've designed them. And in part of my education, I've studied at Harvard as well as Cornell. And in this video, I'm going to go over how you can get into Harvard Medical School. This is probably the hottest question and the hottest topic of discussion on all of my videos which makes sense because you know um you guys see me who went to harvard medical school and then you guys have a lot of questions of how you can pursue mbbs and the the difficult part is that the process is very different if you're in another country which makes sense because there are two different education systems so we're going to go over everything of how you can get in what grades are required what grades will assure you an admission and what exactly do you need to do in order to secure that spot into to Harvard Medical School. So without any further delays, let's jump right into it. All right, so first up, because we are dealing with different types of education systems, let's clear the air on terminology. Let's take India, for example. In India, if you want to become a doctor, you can pursue that as an undergraduate degree. This means that after you finish grade 12, you can go ahead and start your MBBS, which is your path towards becoming a doctor. Of course, you specialize after that, all that stuff, not going to go into the details. In the US, it's different. A doctor's degree can only be pursued as a post-graduation degree. This means that after you finish grade 12, you need to do an undergraduate degree after which you can start that doctoral degree. Point number two is that that is the doctoral degree in the US is not called MBBS. If you try to search MBBS in the US, you're not going to get anything because MBBS doesn't mean anything in the US. After you get that undergraduate degree, you pursue a doctor of medicine degree or an MD, which is typically four years. <laughs> All right. So now let's talk about the fun stuff. What do you need to do in order to get into Harvard Medical School? Now, let's say you are a grade 12 student, right? You're in high school. You're thinking that you want to become a doctor and practice medicine in the US. So you would first need to complete an undergraduate degree. This can be three or four years, depending on whatever your preference is. Since your end goal is to become a doctor and practice medicine, it's a good idea to complete that undergraduate degree in the field of biology, chemistry, or some sort of biosciences. This way you can hit and take the prerequisites that are required in order to get into Harvard Medical School as part of your undergraduate degree. Now prerequisites are certain courses that you need to complete before applying for that MD program at Harvard Medical School. A few examples of these courses include basic biology, anatomy, some lab work, chemistry, microbiology, etc. And if you're doing an undergraduate degree in any bio related field, you're definitely going to be learning this stuff. So there's no need to worry about that. The next thing that I want to point out is although Harvard Medical School does accept international students, if you know that you want to pursue medicine and practice medicine in the US, it's a good idea to get that three or four year bachelor's degree in the United States itself. This is because if that undergraduate degree is from an institution in the US, you wouldn't have to go out of your way to get additional documentation and get into that entire hassle of converting a foreign degree into something that translates into whatever they need in the US. So now let's talk about scores, um, high school scores as well as undergraduate scores. There is absolutely no set minimum or maximum score that you can get that will guarantee you an admission into Harvard Medical School. I have seen students that have outstanding scores being rejected. And at the same time, I've seen students who have average scores being accepted. I, for one, come into the category which I feel I had an above average score. I wasn't someone who was scoring 99s and 100s in high school and undergraduate. I had a pretty decent score of about 90% or so on average throughout all my years, but I feel like I had a wholesome profile to show my character, my personality, and what I, and what I really wanted to do 
if I got into Harvard Medical School, your aim, your passion, your goal with that degree is what matters. And while you should try your best in getting the best course possible, if you don't get 100 on 100, don't let that stop you from even applying because you never know what they might see in you or what stands out to a third person. And that can just be that pushing factor that's needed to get you that acceptance letter. So now let's say you've completed your undergraduate degree in the field of biology. So you have your prerequisites, you've done everything you need to. The next step is what do you need to apply to Harvard Medical School? You need to take something called the MCAT exam. This is the entrance exam that's required to get in. Just like with the rest of the scores, like I mentioned, there's no minimum marks that you need in your MCAT in order to apply to Harvard Medical School. Try your best, get a good score. Of course, the better your scores are, the better your profile is going to look. So I spoke about numbers a lot and while scores have a really good value and can really push your application forward, that's not the only thing that they look for. They are looking for a wholesome profile. They're looking for someone who's done a lot more than just sit and study. And that's where extracurriculars comes into picture. This shows that you've stepped outside your comfort zone into doing something, helping society and contributing to the community. I'm not going to go into super detail on this topic because I already did a video on this. So feel free to watch that video on how you can excel your extracurricular activities to make that wholesome profile. So while we are on the topic of numbers, let's talk about the tuition fee that's required if you get into Harvard Medical School. Now, just as of last year, the tuition fee was $65,000 and an additional $35,000 set aside for other living expenses and health insurance, which comes up to just below $100,000 per annum. Now I know this is a pretty scary amount, especially thinking that this is something that's per year and you'll probably be staying there for a couple years to pursue this degree. But I do want to point out that Harvard Medical School does give out scholarships to international students and there are a ton of different ways in which you can get these. And I've done an entire video about getting scholarships as well as financial aid. And even if you don't get these, how you can survive on campus. There are a lot of ways in which you can very easily sustain yourself after you come here and get the admission. So make sure you check that out and I feel like that could really be helpful to you guys. So Harvard being one of the most prestigious universities in the world has an acceptance rate of just around 5% for the MD program. And that just shows how picky they are and how strict they are about meticulously going through the applications that they get and shortlisting the applicants. They really want to make sure that they get someone they like and someone who's really interested in pursuing a career in medicine. So make sure you have a wholesome profile and you really stand out in your application. So now let's say that you've done everything you needed to. You have all the prerequisites you've applied. You've got great test scores. You have your letters. You have everything you need. What's next? So after this, if you get shortlisted, you can expect an interview with the admission panel as well as some professors at Harvard Medical School. This is where they basically get to know you, your research interests, your life goals, what you're going to do out of this degree. And this typically lasts for about 30 to 40 minutes. Um, I think because of the circumstances right now, this is currently being held online uh, via Skype or video chat. But if things were normal, this would typically happen in person. And that's about it. Once you ace that interview, uh, you're all set. You get admitted into Harvard Medical School. It's easy, right? Just a piece of cake. <laughs> but on a more serious note, I hope that this video gave you some insight and a rough idea as to what you need to do in order to at least apply and get started. So one of the most commonly asked questions that I want to address in this video is, can someone transfer into Harvard Medical School? If an MBBS student in India wants to transfer to Harvard Medical School, it doesn't translate because in India, right after 12th, you can do MBBS. But in the US after 12th, you, you need to do that undergraduate degree. So essentially, it's not like an apples to apples comparison. It doesn't equally translate. So for that reason, Harvard is very strict on saying no, you cannot transfer if you're in the middle of a doctorate program in a, in a, in a in a different country and you want to come into Harvard Medical School. You have to apply from scratch and you need to make sure that you satisfy all of their requirements. 
But with that said, if you are a doctor in a different country and you've already earned that degree, you can transfer to practice medicine in the US. That involves taking the US MLE exam and is a whole separate process. I'm thinking of making that as part two of this video series where I'll go over how you can kind of transfer and practice medicine here without having to do the degree in the US. So if you guys want to see that video, let me know in the comments below and I'd love to make that one and we can talk more on that. But yeah, that was it for this video. I hope that you guys found this one useful. I know that this was one of the most asked videos and I wanted to take my time and made sure that and make sure that I answered all of your questions. If you have any more questions related to this topic, feel free to drop them in the comments below. But until then, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.